Alright, so I just got done watching in Scooby-Doo, Mr. Incorporated, Season 1, Episode 8, The Grasp of the Gnome. Alright, so this episode opens up with sort of a, uh, you know, Medieval Times-esque uh, teenager and, and his girlfriend, or implied girlfriend, at uh, the Medieval Times Fair, and then some strange shadow, small thing, a gnome, based on the title, um, comes in. He says, he, he says, joust me instead of, like, you know, uh, sort of bite me at one point uh, early. And then w the cold opening is, like, 30 seconds. Basically, he gets grabbed by this gnome thing, and he sort of goes lightning blue and is paralyzed. Uh, and then we get the credits, and, and uh, basically, you know, the gang is at this medieval times fair later. Uh, you don't know how much longer, really. And, uh, and... You know, the uh, people who own this place are fighting because, cause, you know, times are tough because this show is ridiculously, you know, post-economic crisis based on when it came out. And, uh, you know, there's there's a, in this episode there was a lot of the, the Velma and Daphne having issues with Fred and uh, Shaggy both uh, being these sort of inept males not giving them as much attention as they're giving their, their male cohorts or, or their, their hobby interests or their, you know... Uh, you know, uh, non-romantic passions or romanticizing things other than them, right? And, uh, there's, like, at one point, this, this, this woman who's crying, and, it, and the gang just goes, oh, there's a woman crying, and they don't help her. And then it cuts, it does the credits, cuts, and, uh, and, uh, then, then her and Daphne are sitting, girl talking, uh, and and it, this I mean I found this episode it was it was very poorly written it felt uh, a little bit like they didn't because the the two episodes prior didn't connect but uh, this one this one did like it felt as though it could have been before the other episodes but uh, the, I mean uh, in this episode in particular the biggest development arguably was uh, uh, Velma directly says I'm seeing Shaggy too Daphne direct she says exactly those words I'm seeing Shaggy and. Uh, and and Daphne's like, and then she says like like she's like, oh you that's great that sounds awesome but, then she's like oh you seem down about it and he's like well, he's not giving me the attention, that I'm giving to him he, I'm not getting back what I'm giving to him but we're seeing each other. And uh, Daphne is you know like I totally relate to you because Fred is so focused on this and I won't, in in this episode Fred actually says um, that. Uh, uh, why, 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 uh, Velma, are you worrying? Because, uh, Fred, like, interrupts their conversation about this, and, you know, she, Daphne immediately tells Fred, Shaggy and Velma are in a relationship, and he's like, and then she, but then she feels bad, but whatever, and, and he, he says, well, why, why do we need to worry about any of that? Uh, we have a great relationship as five people, and, and I realize that Fred, Fred may very well be characterized as sort of a misguided Hyper intelligent, sort of uh, uh, raised in a Mormon family type, uh, and uh, it's interesting. It's very like there's this episode is particularly post two thousand ten, particularly, or sorry, post economic crisis, and uh, just very campy, very, uh, very just the plot itself, the gnome, the whole gnome thing, the gnome mystery is very flaccid. The uh, the two people that. Uh, owned the medieval times place were the bad guys in the end. There was no one else that it could have been. We weren't introduced to enough characters. We saw a cameo from the, the, the guy who sold the clam ice cream. He had clam cotton candy this cotton candy at the time. He was only in one scene, very briefly. Um, Velma did a lot of wisecracks, like a ludicrous amount of wisecracks. Uh, Ruby's Ruby Ruse, Ruby Ruse in this one were very prominent. A lot of Ruby Ruby Ruse and uh, because of the pirate thing and uh, Shaggy was almost the, this entire episode doing a a R matey I'm Shaggy and we need to get more food and Ruby needs to get more food do the whole damn fucking thing and uh, basically I mean that's all I really got to say about it you know it was uh, the, the the whole villain plot was motivated entirely by this guy, he was in a, co a costume in real life, but he was his normal size when he was the gnome because he was short. He had, he had little feet. There was, he, that was, there was something to do with like his family always having little feet or something. 
And he was his whole motivation was because he's insecure about being short. And there was a lot of jokes about that in the last sort of two or three minutes. Um, which I did write down, but uh, they're not worth, they're not good because they're lousy jokes. This one had a lot of jokes that were very, very placid in my, in my personal opinion. But um, I do like the, the possibilities of, of the series in the future because of how direct they're addressing the ongoing romance of the characters. Like this, especially Fred, the way Fred is starting to, to be a little more open about it, I, I, find, I find fascinating. Uh, I think Scooby and Shaggy's relationship is very clearly unhealthy, and, and the, the other characters in, in the show seem to acknowledge that, which, uh, you know, it could, it could really go somewhere. It could really go somewhere. All right, thanks for watching.